Comments on the show. I'm sure Chris, you can write your letters to Chris Davis and we'll try Adeline to make the show better for you. Square, Northeastern, don't ask the zip, I don't know. And it's time. Survey says. The price is wrong. Oh. For trivia. And live from the ECAT studios in Northeastern Massachusetts, this is Tuesday Triviality. It's May 7th, 2024, and I'm your host and Trivia Master of Ceremonies, Tim Popolo. It's time for Trivia. Tuesday Triviality this week is brought to us by Northeastern Savings Bank. From personal and business loan, uh, banking and investing services, Northeastern Savings Bank is here to help you grow. To find out more about their services and locations, go to northeasternsavingsbank.com. So thank you to our sponsor, and also thank you to our viewers for your continuing participation. Uh, this is a live uh, cri trivia questions and answers show. So you can watch this anytime as a rerun like your favorite TV game show but that you can also play live right now online to win prizes. So if you're watching this live right now, here's how it's gonna work. We have this QR code right here on the screen. You can scan that with your phone, or if you're watching online, there's also a clickable link, and uh, we'll put that up on the Facebook as well. Um, <clears throat> you scan that, and that'll get you to our handy dandy answer sheet. No matter how you're watching with us this evening, whether it's on your TV, on your laptop, or on your phone, we'll all be submitting our answers to the same format, so they come in time-stamped down to the second. Um, be advised, any other way that you submit your answers, whether you run to the studio, type it in as a Facebook comment, or scream it at your TV, will not be counted. So please take the time to get that up. It's a very simple form, and you'll notice a few important fields to fill out. Um, your name, your answer are the main two things. There's also an email field. You'll only have to fill that out for your first response of the evening, so long as you don't change your name. Um, that is how we can reach you in case you're one of our lucky winners. Speaking of lucky winners, each round will have a winner. How it's going to work is when the question appears on the screen, you'll have one minute to send in your response before I reveal the answer live on air. Once I do that, it's too late. But uh, the f top three fastest correct answers get their names put in the bag. And at the end of each round, we'll do a drawing for a prize. So it is possible to be a top three answerer for all questions in the round, and that's how you can max out your chances. However, if you're the third fastest answerer for only one of those questions, you still have a chance in that bag to win a prize. So here are our round prizes. We'll be playing three rounds this evening. The first round, we'll be playing for a $50 gift card to the Farmer's Daughter. Located at 122 Main Street here in Northeastern Massachusetts, this rustic chic spot for elevated American breakfast and lunch fare is made with locally sourced ingredients. The Farmer's Daughter $50 gift card is what we're playing for in round one. In round two, we'll be playing for yet another $50 gift card. This is to Bliss Lifestyle Boutique. Uh, this is located at 150 Main Street in Northeastern Mass. Uh, from the way you look to the way you style your look and how you outfit your space. Bliss is a lifestyle boutique that caters to every whim. So this is designer fashion, furnishings, and even wine as well. So Bliss Lifestyle Boutique uh, on Main Street, $50, that's round two. And then round three, to round it down, we have La Cucina Ristorante in Easton. Uh, this one is on 140 Main Street, and it's the Taste Northern Italy flavors and the authentic foods of Italy in the Mediterranean. So an Italian restaurant right there, La Cucina Ristorante in Easton, $50 again for round three. So that is what we're playing for. Again, uh, if you want to max out your chances, you'll want to be a top three answerer for each of the questions, but the drawing will still be random. 
If you want a little bit of a pro tip, uh, spend a second right now to put in your name and email address because time is rewarded. Um, you want to be a fast answerer, but you also have to be a correct answerer. You need both of those things. So if you're able to put in your name while I read the answer of the next one, have that locked and loaded so that you don't have to waste any precious seconds typing in your answer uh, as that one minute timer starts counting down the clock. All right, and with that, uh, we're going to keep this match clean. Uh, we're here not to judge your intelligence. Just judge your collection of useless information. This is general knowledge trivia. So we'll have uh, questions about all the major categories, music, movies, TV, pop culture, geography, history, and science, and more. So uh, put on your thinking caps. We're going to jump right into round one. So let me reiterate, you'll have one minute on the clock to send in your responses, and we will mark down the, the top three fastest answers. Without any further ado, let's launch into round one, question one, on the screens. What is the state capital of Iowa, the Hawkeye State? Iowa, the Hawkeye State, right there. Um, this may be, uh, if you have a, a fifth grader at home, they might help you with this one. Our 50 U.S. state capitals, we're looking for the state capital of Iowa. State capital of Iowa may not be on your bucket list of traveling, but it is still where the business gets done, at least for the state of Iowa. So here we go. We got some answers coming in. And should I also iterate that spelling does not count during this game. Uh, spelling, so do your best when it comes to spelling. Uh, as long as we can understand what you're trying to convey, um, it phonetically reads right. Don't sweat it. Um, you know, send it in, even though you know a letter might be off or backwards. As long as you don't accidentally spell something else that's completely wrong, we'll try to get you that credit. Over oh, our last five seconds here. Last five seconds. All right, and that's time. The correct answer is Des Moines. Des Moines, Iowa, which is uh, French for of monks, uh, named for the river Des Moines. So Des Moines, Iowa is the capital of Iowa. Moving right on to question number two. Question number two, what band released the hit song Wonderwall in 1995? Wonderwall in 1995 is what we're looking for. That's the name of the track. What's the name of the band? And that song uh, is the one, maybe you're going to be the one who saves me. Because after all, you are... My Wonderwall. Wonderwall right there. It's uh, very popular for beginner guitarists to play around a college quad. We're looking for Wonderwall. Is by what band? Okay. And the answers are coming in for this one as well. Okay, and this band... Uh, is English, if that helps anybody. It's an English rock band from Manchester. And I guess a staple of your 90s alternative smooth pop rock. All right, and we're running against the clock right here. That band is Oasis. Oasis sings Wonderwall, arguably their greatest hit of the, that band. Wonderwall. Question number three with another minute on the clock. Here we go. Hopefully this one might be a bit easier. Luxury vehicle company Volvo originates from and is headquartered in what country? What country is Volvo from? So right there, uh, if this one might be easy for you, then this might be a speed question. Who knows? What country does Volvo come from and is still from? Uh, that is currently where the Volvo headquarters is. Looking for a country right here. And of course, there's uh, a lot of fun car things. Um, we can eliminate some. Volvo's not an American or Japanese brand. So I just sort of narrowed the playing field for you right there. Not American or Japanese. So one of the other players in the automotive industry, where does Volvo come from? 
Uh, if you look at a Volvo carefully, sometimes they do put this nation's flag at the center of their emblem or elsewhere on the vehicle. If you know your, your world flags, that is. All right, well, if you know your world flags, you'll also see it at Ikea because it's Sweden. Sweden, home of Ikea, Volvo, and uh, Fjallraven outdoor equipment. So Sweden right there. It's question number three. Moving right on. Uh, who, what is the name of the prince in Disney's The Little Mermaid? So not quite Sweden. I think this is a Danish tale from Denmark. The Little Mermaid. What is the name of the prince in The Little Mermaid? Of course, in the original Grimm version of the fairy tale, uh, there is no name. He's just referred to as the prince throughout the whole original fairy tale. But this prince was given a name in the Disney version, and that's what we're asking you today. What is the name of the Disney prince from The Little Mermaid? Disney prince for The Little Mermaid right here for question number four. Question number four right here. Uh, and this name is not just in the original Disney version from the, uh, I think it was 89. Um, also, the live action remake retains the same character names. So whether you know it from the animated version or the more recent version, uh, still the same name of this prince that Disney decided on a name, I'm sure, within their Imagineering studios. And the best name Disney could come up with was Prince Eric. Prince Eric is the name of the prince in The Little Mermaid. Okay, let's shift gears into another world of sports. Right here in basketball, what is it called to get 10 or more points in three statistical categories? So statistical categories, everybody knows sports is also a game of statistics. What is it called to get uh, 10 or more points in three of these statistical categories? in a single game, should I say. In a single game, uh, what is it called to get that? And these categories could be scoring, uh, rebounding, assisting. Those are three of the top uh, categories right there to, to name a few. What is this called in the sport of basketball? Speaking of which, right now we're in the midst of the NBA postseason. So perhaps a few of these will be happening. One can hope. Everyone likes an exciting game. All right, so uh, what is it called to score 10 or more points in three statistical categories in a game of basketball? And we're down to our last five seconds here. All right, so this is getting a triple-double. A triple-double. Double meaning double digits, so at least 10 in that and triple the three categories. A triple-double is what it's called in basketball. Get me on the court and I'm trouble. Here we go, next question. Going right through round one. In classic literature, what are Athos, Aramis, and Porthos best known as when they are together? Athos, Aramis, and Porthos are best known as what when they're together? And this is classic literature. Classic literature right here. Okay. So maybe maybe we have more uh, literary fans than we do sports fans in the audience. We'll see. Athos, Aramis, and Porthos. Uh, you may not know them by those names, but when they're together, you certainly should recognize their their group. Or. Uh, what their collective name would be. All right, 15 seconds, 15 seconds left for this question. Ooh, -hoo. got a couple close ones. All right, they're a famous trio, a famous trio in literature, and that trio is the Three Musketeers. Those are the names of the three musketeers. Yes, each one is a person with a name, and those are their names. Those are the three musketeers right there. All right, moving right along. Next question, what dictator known as Il Duce uh, said, I prefer 50,000 rifles to 5 million votes? It's one of those 
famous historical quotes right there. I prefer 50,000 rifles to 5 million votes. That was said by what dictator known as Il Duce? All right, and the clock is running right there to name a dictator. And that's for, who we only, after this, you only have one more for round one. So one more chance after this one. So potentially two more chances. And again, round one, this is for the farmer's daughter, $50 gift card. Okay, and the answers are coming in. Il Duce, that uh, if you don't know the quote, maybe you know that dictator's nickname. Right there. The last five seconds to name a dictator of the 20th century. The, the heyday of dictators, I suppose. The, after the end of the monarchs and before the rise of democracy. Uh, which dictator was it? That was Benito Mussolini. Benito Mussolini, uh, il being an Italian, the, and uh, Duce being leader. So il Duce is the leader, and uh, right there, so the leader, il Duce, uh, and maybe il was your, your hint because el would be uh, a Spanish language. Okay, so here's our last one right here for round one. One more minute to win it right here. In the DC Comics universe, Dick Grayson is known by what other name since the 1940s? So, of course, all great comic book characters have their, have one name, and then they have a real name. Clark Kent would be Superman, for instance. Uh, this is not Clark Kent, so the answer is not Superman. Uh, Dick Grayson. Who is Dick Grayson in uh, the DC Comics universe? Right there. Okay, so there we go. The answers are coming in. Dick Grayson, uh, looking for that comic book character. And uh, it is one of the good guys. So if that helps anybody out, we're not talking about a villain here. We're talking one of the characters that would be on the cover of a series of comic books. All right, and ooh, last 15 seconds right here. See who knows their comic books. Uh, or I guess cartoons or movies, the comic book universe now extends far and wide. There we go, and there's our time. Dick Grayson is none other than Robin Boy Wonder. Robin Boy Wonder is Dick Grayson, uh, Bruce Wayne's young ward, uh, Batman and Robin. Uh, this Robin did later grow up. Uh, Batman got a new Robin. This one became Nightwing. So I would have also accepted Nightwing, which was the, this Robin's adult alter ego. But most people know him as Robin Boy Wonder. And with that, we've made it to the end of round one. So we're going to take a brief one minute break. And when we come back, we'll be drawing names from the winner pool right here for our $50 gift card to the farmer's daughter. Again, this is at uh, Main Street in Northeastern, rustic chic spot for elevated American breakfast and lunch fare made with locally sourced ingredients. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Involved in an exciting race around historic Northeastern? Apply to be on Expedition Easton, a local version of the amazing race produced by ECAT. This summer, six pairs, 12 contestants, will get the chance to compete for the grand prize. All ages are welcome, but each pair must have one member over 18 years old. Think you got what it takes to complete the expedition? Email info at eastoncat.org or call us at 508-230-7200. Casting has begun. Dates are set for June 22nd, 23rd, 29th, and 30th. All right, we've had time to tally everybody up. Now it's time for a round one drawing. If you are one of the top three fastest correct answers for each question, you have one chance in this bag. So let me shook it up good. Let me reach down to the bottom. 
see who fell into the corner. 22, okay. So be, for being the, the first answerer of Sweden, this goes to Jessica. Jessica for being the first answerer of Sweden. That was your lucky response of the evening right there. So to you, the farmer's daughter. For everybody else, there's always round two. So here we go. Uh, round two again, we are playing now for Bliss Lifestyle Boutique. Bliss Lifestyle Boutique. This is, uh, you know, from the way you style your look to how you outfit your place. Uh, Bliss is a lifestyle boutique that caters to every whim. So on Main Street here in Northeastern, for everything from uh, furnishings to fashion, designers, and wine. So $50 ought to be a nice, a nice little spree there. Um, now's your chance, if you're just joining us, to put in that QR code, uh, scan it. Uh, this is the same answer form that we'll be using for every question in each round. And it does uh, give us a timestamp down to the millisecond uh, so that we don't have any ties to worry about. So you'll do that. And if you're also just joining us, um, your name and answer are required for each submission. But if it's your first response of the evening, also put in your email address so that we can match up your name to an email. In case you are one of our winners, we have a way to reach you so that you can collect your prize. Because isn't that what it's all about? All right. So if we're all set, so are we for one more round for round two. We have a minute back on the clock. Here's your round two, question one. Existing in feral populations in the U.S., what colorful bird is the official national bird of India? The official national bird of India. And uh, it's not stuck in India. Uh, there are feral populations of this animal as a, a non-native introduced species, should I say, here in the U.S. What bird is the national bird of India? National bird of India right here is what we're looking for. Okay, we got our answers. They're starting to come in, but there's still room for a name in that bag right here. Still room to go. And for the national bird of India. I'm trying to think what other clues to give you. It's a very colorful bird. So that's, a, I guess, a good way to put it. So think of your colorful birds and also think which ones could be native to Southeast Asia. And then also, uh, which ones exist in feral populations in parts of the U.S. that have a similar climate, primarily Florida. All right, the correct answer right here, the peacock. The peacock are more technically the peafowl, since the male is a peacock, and the less colorful female is a peahen. Uh, peacock or peafowl right there is the correct answer. The peacock is the national bird of India. Question number two. Question number two right here. Illinois officially nicknames itself the Prairie State, but touts what other nickname on their state quarter and license plates? So every uh, U.S. state has an official nickname, the Golden State, the Sunshine State, the Bay State. But uh, Illinois, I guess, has an unofficial one too. And instead of putting it as their official one, they decided they will put it on the Illinois license plates and on the Illinois state quarter in the state quarter series which I believe um, Illinois was the 2003 state quarter right there. So the Illinois quarter and the current and former Illinois license plates. And I also believe this uh, also is on their welcome to signs. They call themselves the Prairie State officially, but what other nickname do they put, uh, do they put on their other stuff? I think they might be a bit more proud of this nickname than the Prairie State, which is their official nickname. Uh, Massachusetts also has an unofficial nickname, the Old Colony State, but we don't really put that on too many things other than the YMCA. Okay, right here the correct answer is Land of Lincoln. Land of Lincoln is written on their quarter and on their license plates and their welcome to Illinois signs. Illinois, Land of Lincoln. Um, I would have also accepted the Lincoln State, or uh, really keyword Lincoln. As long as you had Lincoln in there, I would have accepted it. 
right there. So Illinois is, uh, see, the Hawkeye State, that was from the other round. That was Iowa. But uh, Illinois is the land of Lincoln, a.k.a. the Prairie State. Number three in round two. What actor switches lives with Dan Aykroyd in 1983's Trading Places? The movie Trading Places, we're looking for what actor switches lives or trades places with Dan Aykroyd. It's a 1983 movie, very well received in the box office. So uh, needless to say, this has a, a, is a two lead kind of movie has uh, two co-leads right there, Dan Aykroyd being one, and what other actor being the other. Okay, with 30 seconds left, we are running down uh, in the back half of this question right here. We're looking for an actor that was alongside Dan Aykroyd and traded places, as the name would suggest. So how well do you know your classic 1980s movies right here? And you got to think of a, a classic 1980s rising star. All right, and that classic rising star was Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy in Trading Places. Uh, he had then several other hits, hits spanning the 80s and the 90s as well. But uh, this is one of Eddie Murphy's earlier huge commercial successes. Trading places. Question number four. Another minute on the clock. What does the LL stand for in LL Cool J's name? What does LL Cool? What does the LL stand for in LL Cool J's name? Uh, the LL and the J do stand for something. Uh, the J stands for James. That's his first name. Cool James. But what does the LL stand for? And uh, needless to say, uh, you will have to submit two words, each beginning with an L, and you have to get them both correct uh, to be counted correct. No partial credit on this one. So full points or no points. That's how we'll be grading this right here. LL Cool J, what does the LL stand for in LL Cool J's name? Okay. Let's see how many people know their hip-hop, rap, and R&B. I guess primarily hip-hop artists right here. Uh, most hits were from the 90s. What does the LL stand for in LL Cool J's name? None other than Ladies Love. So that means LL Cool J is short for Ladies Love Cool James. Not a bad name to have. Uh, LL Cool J right there, Ladies Love. Question number five. Number five right here, some uh, world cultures for you. Now her name is a common word meaning arch enemy. What is the Greek goddess of retribution? Or rather, who is the Greek goddess of retribution? Her name is now in common English meaning arch enemy. So you can find this in the Webster's and the Oxford Dictionary. Um, this Greek goddess uh, is now also a common word. That means arch enemy. And this is the goddess of retribution uh, because this goddess gives people either fortune or resentment. How's that for a, a coin flip? Either you get fortune or you get resentment. So right there, 20 seconds remaining to name me the Greek goddess of retribution. Greek goddess of retribution, right there. And five seconds right here. Like I said, this Greek goddess name is one that you'd recognize because now it's a regular word in the dictionary. And that word is nemesis. Nemesis is the name of the Greek goddess of retribution and is now a common word synonym for arch enemy. Nemesis, right there. Question number six. All right. Your car's MPH, miles per hour, can be found on the speedometer. Where is your car's RPMs, revolutions per minute, found? So if miles per hour is on the speedometer, where are the revolutions per minute on your car's dashboard? So 
classic car part right there. Uh, how much work your engine is doing is what this measures in RPMs. So as opposed to the speedometer, what is this other meter called? What is this other meter called? Of course, there's a, a handful of things that end with meter on your dashboard, but which one measures RPM? That's, that's right here, about uh, in the back half of round two. And with 15 seconds remaining right here. What is that part of your car? You know it well, it's got a section in red. You don't want to get there. Uh, and it revs, when it changes gears, it drops down. And if you want to watch that, where would you watch it? None other than on your tachometer, your tachometer. Uh, so that shows how hard the engine is working. Speedometer, how fast you're going, and the odometer is how far you're going. So that is your tachometer. Of course, like I said, uh, spelling doesn't count uh, because it's one of those ones with the CH as the, the hard C sound right there. Okay, and moving right along. Famous for his yogiisms and later roles as the New York Yankees manager and coach, what position did Yogi Berra play as an MLB player? Yogi Berra was full of those. Uh, he got the, the nickname Yogi, uh, sort of like the, the guru type person, uh, for dropping these pearls of wisdoms. Uh, so people know him for those yogiisms and as a coach and manager. But of course, before he was a coach and manager, he was a very valued player for the New York Yankees. And what position did he play is what we're asking for right here. What position did he play? <laughs> yeah, those yogiisms are, uh, are good. You can, what is it? you can see a lot just by looking, stuff like that. And 15 seconds left to name his position, one of, one of the nine positions out there on the field. So that sort of, I guess, doesn't narrow it down too much, but uh, he was well known for this position before he was well known for other things, and that position being he was the catcher. He was the catcher for the New York Yankees. All right, and the last question of round two. Boy, how time flies. One more minute on the clock. One more chance for three people to have their, their names in the bag. Here's your last question. What type of clay building material is used in empires across the world and gets its name from the Italian translation of baked earth? Baked earth is the Italian translation of this clay-like building material that was used through many human civilizations. What is the name of this building material? Looking for the name of this clay building material, AKA baked earth, but uh, the Italian word for that. All right, and we're coming, coming down right here. 30 seconds, Ooh -hoo. 30 seconds left to get that in there. And a clay building material, uh, not, not restricted to Italy. It was used in China and South America, and like I said, empires and cultures across the world used this clay building material uh, early in human civilization before modern stone cutting became a lot easier. Here we go, two more seconds. Down to the wire right here. The correct answer is terracotta. Terracotta bricks, the terracotta army, terracotta shingles, terracotta, terra meaning earth, and cotta meaning from the oven. So uh, terracotta is baked earth, and that is the clay building material we are looking for. And with that, we've come to the conclusion of round two. So when we come back for another brief break, we'll be drawing for your $50 gift card to the Bliss Lifestyle Boutique on Main Street here in Northeastern. So $50 on the line, a lifestyle boutique that caters to every whim from the, your, the way you style your look to how you outfit your space. We'll be back in one minute with your round two winner and then round three. Don't go.
Oh, I didn't see you there. Sick of all the new shows and movies dominating pop culture? Well, have no fear, because Old Time Movie and Old Time TV are here, where we like to add our own flair. There's, there's a truck out front, and if, if we could just get the keys... Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? Those are flesh-eating zombies. They upended our car, okay? We're lucky to be alive, especially Joe. I had to pull him out of the trunk, for crying out loud. <sighs> it's been a long day. Also, make sure to check out the Radio Cast, our accompanying podcast where we talk about what we've watched. There was a lot of moments of just <laughs> Mac on the raft going down the river, just it's internal like, monologuing over and over and over. We show the classics and nothing but the classics. Well, except for the weird ones. Check us out on all our channels as well as our YouTube. <clears throat> and we're back. All right. Hopefully uh, you're able to give your brain a little rest before round three. But as your reward for participating, let's see which lucky participant will get their $50 gift card to Bliss. Okay. All right. So let's see what the lucky answer was uh, for being, uh, for, uh, let's see, the second answerer of Land of Lincoln. This goes to Dave W. Dave W., Land of Lincoln was your lucky response right there. So you never know which one it is. Uh, second answerer of Land of Lincoln was, was what got you that one. Uh, for everybody else, there's one more chance coming up. So this one last chance coming up right here is for La Cucina Ristorante. So uh, maybe, maybe you can ask for some terracotta there. Uh, very different from ricotta, terracotta. But uh, $50 right there to La Cucina. That's what's on the line for our final round. And again, uh, if you lost access to your answer sheet, it's right here again. And if you're just joining us, the, the rounds are isolated. They're not cumulative. So if you want to jump in just for round three, there's no penalty. Um, you're at no disadvantage. For each one that you get right, you have the same equal chance if you are one of the top three fastest answerers, that is. So uh, get in your name ahead of time to shave off a second or two from your response. We're going to jump into our final round right here. One minute on the clock. Number one, what band reached number one on the charts with their debut single, My Sharona, in 1979? My Sharona, right there. So maybe this is, uh, you know, this band didn't do as much after their big hit in the U.S. as Oasis did. Uh, but again, you have the title of a hit song. Who is the artist that brought us this hit song? That hit song being Ma 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 My Sharona. Okay. And the answers are coming in. Looks like, looks like people do know my Sharona. Uh, you got 20 more seconds for time, Sharona, right here. 20 seconds left to give me the name of that band, their debut single. This is how they hit the scene, is with this in 1979, made a name for themselves, but this was their only single that got major airwave play in the U.S., that is. All right, and the correct answer right there was the knack. The knack. Of course, uh, like I said, spelling doesn't count. So if you drop the silent K, no worries. The knack for my Sharona. Question number two. Here we go, another chance. Question number two. Who was the seventh president of the United States? Seventh president of the United States. There's no uh, trickery to this question. Just a uh, very... Simple question, but that doesn't make it an easy question. Simple does not always equal easy, as uh, some other things like the capital of Iowa may, may seem. But the seventh president of the United States, uh, many people can easily rattle off our first three in some of our previous 12. But uh, number seven, who was president number seven of the United States of America? 
and by no means is this an obscure president. So uh, this is not one of the presidents that died in 30 days or, uh, or, or other wacky and wild adventures. Uh, this president is well known. In fact, this president uh, may be in your pocket this very moment. Five seconds remaining to name the seventh president of the United States. And why would this president be in your pocket? It is none other than Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson right there. He actually ran for sixth president and lost to John Quincy Adams, but then ran again and won. So uh, John Quincy Adams, president six, Andrew Jackson lost to him, but then became the seventh president in the next election cycle. Question number three. Question number three right here. What type of fishing lure is intended to create a jerky vertical motion? So we're looking for a specific name of a type of fishing lure uh, that specifically is designed to use jerky vertical motions to lure fish. What is the name of this kind of lure uh, when you're fishing, which uh, now the weather is getting nicer. Maybe it's time to break this out of your tackle box and hit the lakes. We're looking for a type of fishing lure right here. A type of fishing lure. And now we're about halfway through. Halfway through this question. and uh, But not quite halfway through this round. So, 20 more seconds. And again, a $50 gift card is what we're playing for here in round three. 15 seconds to name a type of fishing lure. Uh, yes, there are different names. Um, here's your standard lures. There's your bobbers and worms and baits. Uh, even all the types of hooks have their name based on shape. But the jerky vertical motion lure is specifically a jig. So you have your lures and jigs and flies primarily. So it is a jig uh, that stays in the water and does the up and down to lure fish to it. Okay, here we go. Our next question right here. In which film does Robin Williams play a character named Dr. Sean McGuire? Okay, so this one you might have to think about. You might have to take a little bit more time than the first 10 seconds to think about Robin Williams movies and then think of Robin Williams movies in which he could be playing a character called Dr. Sean McGuire. Uh, if you sort of narrow it down to doctor roles, you can probably narrow it down to three, um, perhaps four, but probably three Robin Williams movies you'd be deciding between right here. So Dr. Sean McGuire is what we're looking for, and which Robin Williams movie is it? And like I said, offhand, I can think of uh, three. I'm sure if uh, we dig, we might find an, a fourth or a fifth where he plays somebody with a uh, an advanced postgraduate degree. Which Robin Williams movie is he, Dr. Sean McGuire? Okay, the correct answer is Goodwill Hunting. Goodwill Hunting as the professor right there. Um, he also was professor in Flubber and Patch Adams, but I'm glad nobody wrote Patch Adams because his name was Dr. Patch Adams in that movie. But Goodwill Hunting was that movie for Robin Williams. Here we go, number five, entering the back half of round three. What world's capital was renamed from Edo in 1868? So that means up until 1868, this city was called Edo. Uh, but after 1868, it was renamed to the name that we know it today, and it is a world capital. A world capital right here um, that up until 1868 was known as Edo, but uh, 1869 to present day, it is a capital city that retained the same name. No, no other switcheroos after this. So what is that world capital uh, that used to be called Edo? Okay, remember you sort of narrowing it down to uh, world capitals, and specifically, I guess, look at uh, what kind of world capital would be called Edo, and where in the world could you find it? All right, 
two seconds remaining. The correct answer was Tokyo. Tokyo, uh, meaning East Capital, was the, the renamed version of Edo. And um, where else did you know the word Edo? Uh, the Edo art period uh, predates the 1868, and uh, the Edo period of Japan did have wonderful, vibrant art. So Tokyo is the name that Edo became. So if you want to visit the, the city of Edo, it doesn't no longer exist, you'd just be going to Tokyo. Okay, let's get a little scientific right here. Our next question, what is the name for the 50% seawater, 50% freshwater mixture found in estuarine places? So an estuary or an estuarine place is where a river goes out to sea. And wherever a river goes out to sea, you have a 50-50 mix of salt water and fresh water from seawater and river water. And what is that mixture called? What is that mixture called right there? Um, yeah, we're 50% salt water, 50% fresh water. And there are many wonderful estuaries in our Bay State because the Bay is full of them. Uh, of course, before we, we dammed up a lot. I don't believe the Charles River has an estuary anymore, but the Neponset River does. Uh, and let's see, maybe the, the Mystic River as well. So wonderful estuaries. You can, they're full of life. Uh, a lot of great birds, a lot of great crustaceans in the estuary because it's a unique mixture of this water and it is called brackish water. Brackish water is the 50-50 mixture of salt water and fresh water. All right, we have two more questions. So that means six more names in the bag. Here we go. Our second to last question of the evening. In a game of Texas Hold'em, what comes after the flop and the turn? So game of Texas Hold'em, you have two cards that you hold on to. And then cards are revealed on the table for everyone to see. Uh, first being the flop, then coming the turn. And what comes after the flop and the turn in a game of Texas Hold'em? There we go. So the flop and the turn in a game of Texas Hold'em. Let's see, uh, we got some right answers and some, some clever guesses, but uh, you'll just have to see how you did. So when you're playing Texas Hold'em, you have, you wait, you got the flop, you wait for the turn, and then finally comes what? Maybe uh, Texas Hold'em will have some brackish water on the table because it is the river, the flop, the turn, and the river. Uh, there are other ways of playing so we accepted some other nomenclature, but it's the river that comes after the flop and the turn, if that's how you're naming your cards right there. The flop, the turn, and the river. All right, so we got one more ahead of us, and ooh, maybe it's a doozy. Let's see right here, our final question of the evening. A Spanish tradition since the 1300s, what city hosts the most famous Running of the Bulls event? So the original and the biggest and the baddest running of the bulls happens in what city in Spain? And uh, I'll preempt, it's not Madrid. It's uh, another city that this is their most famous claim to fame. Of course, uh, other cities host their smaller versions of the running of the bulls, but if you were to experience the full regalia of the situation. If you wanted to see the running of the bulls, uh, wear all white with your red bandana and run with the bulls as dangerous as it is, what city would you have to go to? What city has the original running of the bulls since the 1300s? Okay, ooh. let's see, we got, we got one correct response so far. So, you still have two more chances right here. Anybody up for grabs? What city is it? All right, and 
Just like that, down to the wire, we actually did get two more correct ones right there. That is Pamplona, Spain. Pamplona, uh, we accepted, of course, things that were close like Pamploma, Pamplonia. Um, but Pamplona, Spain is where the running of the bulls happens. The big, bad one, the famous one. Uh, so with that, We've concluded round three. When we come back from our break, we'll be drawing for a gift card to La Cucina Ristorante, uh, Italian fair here in Easton, Massachusetts. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with our final winner. Hello and welcome to Easton News. I'm Joe Taft. And I'm Jack Ryan, and together we bring you everything you need to know about Easton, including politics. The town of Easton is undertaking a crucial public safety and public works facilities replacement project to enhance essential services for the community. Community events. Mark your calendars and get your costumes ready. The Easton Food Pantry will be hosting a Halloween parade and sports. Boys soccer stayed hot, defeating Stoughton 2-1. That was the team's fifth straight division title and fourth in a row in the Davenport. With APCSM guest segment, Pet of the Week. Hi, I'm Katie with the Animal Protection Center, and today we have a little Iris. With help from special correspondent, Wyatt Fain. Join us. For Easton News. Playing six o'clock, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. And we're back. All right, so it looks like uh, we have 24 names at the ready, but uh, before we do that. I just want to say thank you again to our sponsor, Northeastern Savings Bank, uh, for bringing this show. But we also can't do it without the help of all of you. So if you enjoy this and other programs on ECAT, don't forget that they can't do it without help from viewers like you. So if you would like to help out ECAT with sponsorship or donation, you can go to EastonCAT.org and scroll down for the donation link. And uh, if you donate $15 or more, your reward can be this little buddy that's been with me. You can get your own e-cat. Uh, he has yet to be named. Uh, Easton Public School children are deciding and voting on his or her official name. So you can go home with one of these uh, if you donate to e-cat. All right, and with that out of the way, we have our final round three winner. Okay, so let's see which question this is. Okay, and for being the first correct answerer of the river, this goes to Courtney. Courtney, you are our round three winner. So there we go. Courtney, you go home with a $50 gift card to uh, La Cucina Ristorante. For everybody else, there's always our next show, which will be May 28th, Tuesday, for Tuesday Triviality, uh, Tuesday, May 28th at 6 p.m. You can watch it here on ECAT or live via Facebook. Um, you know, you can study up, but there's no studying for random questions. You can just put your thinking cap on, have a good hearty meal, and hopefully I'll see you then. Uh, stay curious and enjoy trivia. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.